continue to strengthen him. And also let's continue to hold Brother Brian up in prayer that God would also strengthen him and help him to get out of the way and really preach to us tonight. Are there any other spoken requests? Please remember Brother Michael. He said that he was not feeling good tonight. And just remember that uh, ask God to touch his body tonight. Anyone else? Any spoken? Let's see. Uh, Patty's still in trouble with that. Okay. Just remember Sister Patty. <clears throat> All unspoken requests, uplifted hand. I'm going to ask Brother Nick if you would to please lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Father, to, to be able to come and gather in your name, Father. Thank you for this ability, Father, that you put in us to do this, Father. Father, just thank you for your mercy, Father. Father, I just ask you, Father, that you still feel welcome here to be among us, Father. For we are your needy children, Father. I ask you, Lord, that, that you'd be with Brother Mike, Father, as, as he's with with his elements, Father, that, that what he's going through, Father, I ask you, Father, that you just, that you just heal him, Father. Yes. We thank you, Father, for your healing, Father, that, that you've done purchase for us. Thank you, Father. I ask you, Father, that you be with, with Sister Patty as well, Father, with your headaches, Father, and, and as with all the unspoken requests, Father. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you so be with Brother Brian, Father, as he God, we come forth to, to bring, Father, what you have us to hear, Father. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to Amen. Sing another chorus. Uh, I love you, Lord.
gracious Father, we're so thankful, Lord, and privileged people to assemble in your name, <clears throat> believing that we have received that very name by inheritance that your son received, believing also by marriage. And so, Father, we believe, as your prophet said, the marriage of the Lamb is here, and then we go to the wedding supper. Help us, Lord, to prepare for this great hour. Help us, Lord, to have our souls ready for the going home. And we pray, Father, that we would soul search, O oh God. And as David said, try me, O Lord, and see if there be any wickedness in me, and then purge it from me, O oh God. So, Lord, we just commit our hearts to Thee. We ask that You to be with us and help us, Lord, as we endeavor to keep in the unity of the saints and the unity of the doctrine of Christ, which, according to Thy Word, as <coughs> and will bring forth a unity in the family. Now, help us, Father, as we examine Thy Word tonight to see what our character is reflecting, and if it is not reflecting the image of your firstborn son, as it did to William Bradham, prophet of God, then we know, Father, we are lacking. And so we pray that you would help us, Lord, by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> you may be seated. I'd like to take our text tonight from Hebrews 10, verse 22 to 23. <coughs> Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Now, Brother Branham said in his sermon, uh, God's only provided place of worship, paragraph 233. <coughs> he said, my action and the vindication of God's word in my life shows whether I'm a child of God or not. And the word to show it means to reveal, to manifest, or make evident one's character in a given situation. So what we're looking at here is, Brother Brown said, my actions and the vindication of God's word in my life, it shows, it reveals, it manifests, or makes evident whether I'm a child of God or not. <coughs> so I guess then if we want to really have an assurance of our position in Christ, we need to look at how we react to his word. If we can't get enough of his word, no matter how hard it may seem at, at times, then we have assurance that we are his. Because Jesus said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So then our hungering and our thirsting is evidence that we shall be filled. <coughs> then if we are hungering and thirsting, we have an assurance that God will fill us. And it is not for us to fill ourselves with his spirit, because Romans 15 and verse 13, Paul tells us, Now the God of hope will fill you. And Ephesians 1.23, he said, It is God that filleth all in all. So with this in mind, I would like to examine the thoughts behind this statement, my actions and the vindication of God's word in my life. It shows whether I'm a child of God or not. It manifests whether I'm a God a child of God or not. <laughs> it is not so much my actions that vindicate me. Well, that would be works. But he is very specific when he says, my actions plus the vindication of God's word in my life. That's what declares just who I am. Not just my actions alone. That's contrary to the gospel of grace. That is why I said, uh, uh, or what I've been you know, trying to bring out <laughs> about how Brother Branham said, uh, and, or actually Jesus said he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also I'm not talking about trying to do super duper I'm talking about the action of God in your life the works of God in your life because if you don't have those works if you don't have the works of God in your life you're dead period I don't care how much you can talk it like Brother Bell said they got it but they don't got it you see <laughs> but that's what declares just who I am not my actions alone because as I said it's contrary to the gospel of grace but it's my action and the vindication of God's word in my life. Now, just because, well, let me just give you an illustration uh, about school when I was a boy. The teacher was trying to help us understand associations of sets and subsets. And he said, all boys are male, but not all, bo not all males are boys. You see? Some males are men because they grew up. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. All men were once boys, but not all boys grow up to be men. Some die before they reach manhood or less 
Look at another way. All fathers were once children themselves, but not all children become fathers. Some children are girls, and some men never have any children. <laughs> Just because you are, say, I'm walking in the light, therefore the blood of Jesus Christ is, 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 I mean, there's two million people that are walking in this message. Under the pillar of fire, was there not two million people that left Egypt under the pillar of fire? And didn't Jesus say they're everyone dead? Now that strikes home to this message when he says that. It strikes right home to this message. You have to look at yourself on a daily basis. Don't say, hey, I'm the preacher's kid, I'm the deacon's kid, I'm, I'm, I'm a trustee's kid, I'm a treasurer's kid, whatever. Or I've been following the message since I was born. Have you really? <laughs> well, I go to church. So what? Look at the rich young ruler. He did all the Ten Commandments, even honored his parents. And I can ask each one of you kids if you've always honored your parents, and I'll bet you the answer would not be yes. Well, you might be yes to me, but at the White Throne it won't be yes. Huh? So he was in a better position than you are if you're not born again. He wasn't born again. And he ended up in hell. I am pleading to make sure that you're born again. Get on your knees. Get away from all of this, just this 20th century e-junk. Nothing wrong with a little relaxation once in a while, but not every night, not every day. <clears throat> get on your knees. Get before God. Find out whether you are His or not. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to confuse you. <clears throat> but I'm trying to help you to see that one word off is Satan's kingdom. And I'm also trying to help you to see what we've been striving for. We looked at this, you know, we've been looking at uh, the spoken word is the original seed. And Brother Brad said every, he's a son of God, seed will bring forth son of God. And the manifestation of the seed in its season is the evidence that the seed is indeed for the season. Am I making things clear? You all got enough gardening experience this year, and you probably have some in the past. <coughs> you can plant certain seeds that aren't going to come up in the season you plant them for because they're not for that season. Winter wheat you don't plant in the springtime. You plant it in the fall. There's certain seeds for certain seasons. <coughs> are we then the seed for this season, or are we the seed for Lutheran season? Or are we the seed for Luther's or Wesley's or Pentecostal season? Or are we the seed for this season? If we're the seed for the season, then your life will manifest your character, whether you are indeed conforming to the image of the firstborn son or not. <coughs> <clears throat> we hold too much to our own opinions. And can I say something? Your opinions don't mean diddly squat to God. Not one bit. Jesus, in my opinion, and Brother Brass said Jesus tried to pass the buck. I mean, he tried to get out of it. He said, Father, my will, I don't want to do it. But nevertheless, whatever your will is, Father, I will go through with it. He tried to pass the buck, Brother Brass said. How many times do we try to pass the buck when it comes to doing what's right? <clears throat> so we see the evidence of the seed of the seed manifests God life is evidence that the seed contains God life. Just like a watermelon seed will manifest watermelon. Rhubarb will manifest rhubarb. God seed will manifest God life. And it must be in its appointed season. Okay? Well, that's half of it. But every principle of God has two sides to it, twins. A seed that does not manifest shows no evidence of seed life. It's like the young man that came to me, bawling his eyes out. <laughs> he, said, I, he said, I always believed I was, I was God's seed, I, that I was elect. And I said, I don't care if you are elect, genuine elect seed. If you're not born again, you're dead. Dead, dead, dead. And you're no different than the other seeds that are dead. You're dead. Period. I said, you need to get on your hands and your knees, get away from all the boy toys, get away from everything, and get out before God before it's too late. And he didn't do it. He went to prison later on. 
It'll catch up to you one day. A seed that does not manifest light shows no evidence of seed light. And that doesn't matter if it's wheat or watermelon or even God's seed. If it receives the same rain, which is the doctrine of Christ, and if it receives the same light, which is the illumination of the Word, and if it still does not manifest God's light, which is to do the will of the Father, then this non-activity is an evidence of a lifeless hole or a dried out shuck. Now that may be hard, but that is gospel truth. And I'm not up here to pamper and to scratch itching ears. The gospel hurts sometimes, but if it don't hurt, it won't do you any good. Brother Brown said, these communion times, we should come and really be soul searching. God, is my life worthy of the gospel? Am I living a Christian life? Or am I a gossip? Am I a nitpicker? Am I out looking for a fight? Am I so skin thin that every time someone says something about me that I have to retaliate? Then kill me out, God. And let your life grow in me. And before you reach any conclusions, let me say this. If a seed is planted and it does not manifest, then we need to examine whether it is getting any water, which is the word, and if it's getting any light, which is revelation. And if one of these factors is missing, it will not produce a manifestation of its seed life. I had a beautiful email this week from a brother from um, <laughs> northern Africa. I don't remember if it was Liberia or um, that other place up there. It's kind of a coastal, uh, coastal country. No, it's... Uh, uh, it's a French name, uh, Coast de Ivory, I think, or Coast uh, Ivory, Ivory Coast. <clears throat> anyway, the brother wrote to me a very nice email, and he said, "Brother, I've been listening to your sermons, and he said, I, uh, I began to listen to Brother Bran every day, like you said, and he said it has changed my life. It's created an atmosphere that I, I, I just anticipate getting into." Now, my question is, how much of that are you listening to, or how much of Hollywood are you listening to? Because when Brother Branham talked to the Indian chief, and he said, Brother Branham, since I got the Holy Ghost, he said, the two dogs that are warring within me, a black dog and a white dog. And Brother Branham said, who's winning, chief? He said, the one I feed the most. And it will show in your life by your bickering, your fussing, your stewing, uh, your irritability, your not... You know, well, it's just that time of month. Hogwash. I don't care how irritable you get. Christian living is Christian living. There is no excuses when it comes to that. So we have three things so far that are needed for seed life to manifest. Number one, a seed that has life. Number two, light to quicken the seed. And three, water to help it grow. And now there's only one other thing that can prevent or hinder a seed from manifesting a seed life. And if you turn with me to Mark chapter 4, verse 13 to 20. <clears throat> and I want you to notice verse 19, where he speaks of the cares of this life, how it chokes off the word, and it brings the word, it brings no fruit. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, and how will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they which, by the wayside, by the wayside where the, so, uh, the word is sown, uh, when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. But afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this life, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, enters in, notice, choking the word. And it, the word, becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some hundredfold. <laughs> well, you say you're just a legalist preacher. No, that's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. Well, the Baptist will tell you, hey, it don't matter, there is no law, I'm under grace, fall and wash. <clears throat> That's why they stopped in Brother Brandon about women not wearing short skirts and, and not cutting their hair and things like that. They said, you're just a legalist, a woman here. Well, you know, if that's the way God likes it, and if my heart is right with God, 
I'm going to do what's pleasing to God. Amen. Call it what you will. In Luke chapter 8, verse 14 to 15, we read, And that which fell among the thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, to keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Patience. They bring forth fruit with patience. <coughs> How about if we all say that together? Bring forth fruit with patience. One more time. Bring forth fruit with patience. Can we have patience? Don't ask for it because you get a lot of trial. But ask that God would help you to learn patience in your heart. Because that's what you need. And if you need the trials, then so be it. They are more precious to us than gold and perishes. Now, is it possible to bear good fruit, seed, if you are so earthbound with the pleasures of this world? <coughs> because John told us in 1 John 2 and verse 15 to 17, he said, Love not the world, neither the things that are uh, in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world will pass away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth what? The will of God. Isn't that what Jesus said? Not my will, but thy will be done. We're looking at the will. Now we know that to every season there is a seed. Or uh, uh, excuse me, to everything there is a season, as, as Solomon said. <clears throat> but we're running out of seasons. This is the last season. This is the end time. Don't put off tomorrow to get right. Or to get right with God, because there may be no tomorrow. Now I think I've said enough about non-seed or non-manifestation of life in the seed, but tonight I want to flip it again. And I want to look at, uh, at the thought of what exactly the manifestation of seed life is and what it should do for you who have this manifestation in the season. <laughs> you see, I'm not teaching ladder rain. I'm not teaching to be running over buildings and jumping up and everything else. I'm not like some that would do the spiritual leapfrog. I don't believe in that nonsense. But, I will tell you this, if your life isn't manifesting God life, you, you don't have God life. Period. We're taking one thing with us, and that's our character. Yeah. That's thus saith the Lord, because that's thus saith the vindicated prophet, who had thus saith the Lord. You're taking one thing with you, and that's your character. And yet you polish up everything else but your character. You focus on everything but your character. And yet you're only taking that with you. It's time you focus. Get focused. Get that character so that it is exactly the way it's intended to be by God's Word. Don't be so hard-hearted about everybody else. Don't even look at anybody else. Look at yourself. Brother Ben went into that restaurant. He saw that policeman with his hands on that woman's backside. And Brother Ben was so angry. <clears throat> he said, God, why don't you just burn the whole thing up now? And the Holy Spirit gave him a mental vision, he called it. And he was standing there and he saw the world and he saw his own sins reaching up and the blood holding him back. Get your eyes focused on you because first of all, you can't perfect the next person. Only God can do it. You can write at them, you can talk to them nicely, you can talk to them not so nicely, you can do it in every way you can and it's not going to do them one bit of good. Get your eyes on you. When you sweeten up, and are so irresistibly sweet, maybe they want to be with you more. Maybe they want to be sweet, like you. Huh? All right. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 6 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. What does it mean? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsels of the ungodly. In other words, you don't take your counsel from the ungodly. You don't take advice from the ungodly. Stay away from them. Nor do they stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Scornful. Steve, what's the word scornful mean? Hateful, I guess. All right. Anybody else want to add to that? Judgmental. Judgmental. Critical. Critical. How about, let's use some 21st century words, nitpicking. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the nitpickers. 
When the nitpicking begins, get up and walk out. When the gossip begins, get up and walk out. When somebody wants to tell you a little bit of something about somebody, just say, I don't want to hear it. Even if they say, well, it's about you. I don't want to hear it. That's what Brother Brandon said. I don't want to hear it. Well, Brother Brandon, but that concerns you, concerns your mother. I don't want to hear it. Isn't it so much nicer not to hear? How would you like to be that servant, that blind servant who doesn't hear? He, he can't see anything. He doesn't hear nothing but what God wants him to hear. I'll tell you how you can do that. Plug in your iPod. I'll sit and talk to Nick. He, he don't answer. He just listens to Brother Brandon. That's all right. That's right, but he yell, wrap you on the shoulder or something. I'd rather you do that and keep your focus and listen to an iPod all day long and just stay focused than to be listening to every telephone call that comes and every gossip that comes your way and every negative thing about anybody. Just forget it. Because what does it do good what good does it do for you? It tears you down. What good does bad news do you? It upsets your stomach. Then it upsets your inner tracks and all that. Makes you sick. So don't listen to it. Whatsoever things are pure. Yeah, pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, you're all going through times. I know you are. But Brother Brown said you don't live any higher than your pastor. And, I, I, you know, I, I get the volumes loud from all over, all different directions. But God is teaching me one thing, and that's just to shut my mouth. Jesus said that. You know, he, he did that. He said, when you are reviled against, revile not back. What does revile mean? You're opening your mouth and saying, you, you're tossing back the bars. He said, when they revile you, don't revile back. When they smote him on the cheek and said, Are you the Son of God? He didn't answer them. The Bible says he answered them not. Let them think what they want to think. Does it matter? Honestly, does it really matter? In the long run? If you make it, they don't. Does it really matter? I don't think so. And if you're going to say anything in return, the Bible says... A kind answer turneth away wrath. Because it also says an offended brother is harder to win than a walled city. Now walled cities, the wall's up there for a purpose. It's for a defense. And once you've offended the person, <laughs> their defenses are up. You think you can get through that wall? What if it's a wall that's 8 feet thick or, or 24 feet thick like Jericho? Uh-uh. You're best off just to take it and shut up. Doesn't matter what they say. You know where you stand. You know where your roots are. And you know it's pleasing to God. When Jesus was standing there, they said, Are you the Son of God? <clears throat> and he didn't answer. They smacked him across the face. What do you do? You turn the other cheek. Well, if that doesn't get their vote. If they got to go. So we see the contrast between seed and non seed. But let's look at the seed whose leaves do not wither, whose fruit comes forth in the proper season. It tells us that God watches over them with an active participation. And remember, he who began the good work in you shall perform it if you let him. God is not a God of forced religion. When they try to force Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship Daniel's image, that's Daniel's image, that's who it was. They wouldn't do it. And so they're going to throw him in the fire. They said, hey, that's fine. But I ain't going to do it. Do what you will. Our, we have a brother in Iran right now. They're going to kill him. If they haven't already. It's all over Fox News. It's all over CNS. It's, it's all over the White House. They're all talking about it right now. A brother in this message. They're going to kill him because it said, Will you repent? Will you recant? And he said, The word repent means to turn back. How could I turn back from the blasphemy that I was in before? 
Huh? What are you going to do when that day comes, if it comes? It's already here. There's martyrdom beginning. Unless the hand of God steps in to save their brother's life. But he that will save his own life is going to lose it. He's in a wonderful position right now. Because he could be out of here in just a very short time. Just keep focused, brother. Keep focused. So, if he who began the good work and you shall perform it, will you let him? So God will make sure that you're producing timely fruit. <clears throat> and God will bring trials and testing to make sure that we use our faith. So don't worry too much about what fruit you're going to bear because God will also give you tests that you need in order to perfect that fruit, that faith. He gave you the faith. He also gives you the means to use it and to bring it to maturity and completion. You see why there's miracles in Africa much more than there is here in the United States? Almost every time I go over there, there's something supernatural takes place. Why? The people are expecting it. Are you? Will you be expecting the body change when the time comes? Will you be expecting to be caught up in that resurrection ministry when it comes? Or are you going to be so busy with your earthly works, your earthly jobs, your earthly social activities, your earthly entertainment? You know, the early Christians spent a lot of time in prayer. <clears throat> a lot of time reading their Bible. I don't want to embarrass you all, but I might ask a question, but you don't have to raise your hand to me. God knows your heart. How many of you read your Bible every day? How many of you pray an hour every day? How about a tithe of your time to God? 2.4 hours a day. Would that be nice? <clears throat> in Hebrews 10 verse 22 23 we read to begin our service tonight Paul said let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised notice he says let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance that is what we want Full assurance. And that's why Brother Brown is telling us here that the vindicated word will produce something in our lives that will make that will make or take over, and that will be an evidence to us that we are indeed God's seed. <coughs> he said, My action and the vindication of God's word in my life shows, manifests whether I'm a child of God or not. It, it will reveal it. My action, not, not my actions alone, no. As I said, that's words. But my action and and in conjunction, and, and in conjunction, that links the two thoughts together, my actions is one thought, and the vindicated word of my life is the other. So what he's saying here is the vindicated word of my life will produce an action in my life. And those two will show I have God's life in me. Because let's face it, a seed that never comes forth, no matter how much you give it light and water, if it still does not manifest any life, then it is only a husk, it is only a shock, it's just dry and it's dead. But when the seed manifests life, due to the vindicated word shining upon it, then that seed by manifesting life shows it has life. And John said in 1 John 2, verse 17, And the world will pass away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that what? Oh yeah, we can just talk about it because that's good enough. You know, we have passed the faith, that's all that matters. He that doeth the will of God. They've got it, but they don't got it. He that doeth, not speaketh. When Brother Brandon spoke the token, he said, <clears throat> he said, he didn't tell us to talk about it. He told us to apply it. But he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. That means he will live forever. God life that cannot perish. And as Brother Brown quoted uh, <clears throat> from Revelation chapter 22, he said, Blessed are they that do all his commandments, that they might have a right 
to enter into life, the tree of life. So we're looking at what Brother Rand calls an evidence of God's life in us. A combination of the vindicated word of God in our life and what it produces in the season. It's the fruit. Now also remember, not just any fruit will do, but the fruit for the season, of which he told us is the anointed, in the anointed ones at the end time, is the fruit is the teaching for the season. <coughs> so we're talking about assurance this evening. Assurance that the word of God brings and knowing that we're a part of that word of God for the hour in which we live. In Hebrews 10.22, he tells us that we have a true heart, a true heart, in full assurance of faith. And since faith is a revelation, we then have a true heart in full assurance because of this revelation. Now, how much more assurance could you have than the revelation of Jesus Christ to see yourself responding to it and preparing yourself by it? I have not gone around the world and expended my life energies just to teach theology. One God, he had a son. What good does that do you? I've gone to teach the people to focus on the Son of God because he's the pattern. And if we're going to be conformed to the image of the firstborn son, get focused on him. He said, if I be lifted up, it will draw all men to me. So, where's your focus? The first time somebody says something that you're not comfortable with, you pipe back at them, or are you focused on Jesus? The first time somebody hurts your feelings, you get mad and upset, it shows you don't have the Holy Ghost. Or at least the Holy Ghost is taking flight. Oh yeah. Listen, there are people that had the Holy Ghost and they lost it. That's called foolish virgin. Their oil did run out. They had it for a time. They had it for a season, but they didn't keep it. They had broken cisterns. All those things are Brother Brown's sermons. <clears throat> I'm telling you, get focused. One of these days, if you're focused and you're part of that election, you're going to see what others around you don't see. You're going to step into a dimension they're, they're not even aware of. Brother Brown said the rapture, and Brother Ron, you remember this quote, oh, Brother Brown said the rapture is going to be so um, common, it'll pass right through you and you won't even know it. So what he said, the rapture will be so common or so natural, it'll pass right through you and you won't even be aware. Unless you're sensitive, unless you're tuned, unless you're focused. That's why Jesus said, the eye that is single, has, it's all light. It's, it, it doesn't mean single like if you're one eye, a cyclops or whatever. It's talking about having a single focus. It's total light. Now, how much more assurance could you have than the revelation of Jesus Christ becoming real to you? That you actually see that life coming into you and taking over your life. You actually see yourself as part of this end time sign, seed sign. In 1 John 3, verse 1 to 2, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows that it's not because it knew him not. Beloved, now... Are we sons of God, but it doth not yet appear what we shall be? But we know that when he shall appear, that's that is appearing, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he truly is. And notice our response to this. Because that's all passing. When he appears, we're going to be like him. Why? Our response, verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. And how, do you, how does a young man cleanse himself? By taking heed thereto according to word. Psalm 19. Now in Hebrew 10.22, the word assurance is a Greek word, plero florio. And it's used in the scripture as to fully believe, or to be fully persuaded, or to show full proof, or to be fully known. The word actually means to fill one with any thought or conviction or inclination, and hence to make one certain, to persuade, convince, and be assured. We see it used in Luke 1 and 1, for as much as many have taken in hand and set forth in order a declaration of these things, which are most surely believed among us. And the word most surely believed is that same Greek word. <coughs> in Romans 4, 18 to 22, it's used as fully persuaded. Paul says, Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, 
but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Ninety-nine years old when he received that promise, or when, he, when that promise became actualized through his body. A hundred years old when he had his first kid. Now, I may be that old when I have my first grandchild. But I've already had my first kids. So I don't have to wait 70 more years like he did. I don't know <clears throat> how you can picture that in your mind. But listen, even they, though they lived to be a little bit longer in those days, they were still were old. And none of us is, well, Steve, you're in your 60s. Add another 30-some years to your life and then have your first child. Think about that. How about Brother Vale? Three more years from now, having his first kid. 97, 98, 99, getting his Sarah. And then 100 years old, his Sarah. Just imagine that. It's hard to even think about. That's why I said, through faith and patience, inherit the promise. Patience. <clears throat> Second Timothy 4 and 5. It's used as making full proof. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And 2 Timothy 4, 16-17. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid in their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Fully known. And Colossians 2 and 2. That their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of full assurance of understanding, and to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and, and of the Father, and of Christ. Notice, full assurance of understanding. First Thessalonians 1 and 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as we know what manner of men uh, we were among you for your sake. Whatever happens, since Brother Brown went off the scene, of uh, the gospel coming not in word only, but also in power. Why did the power leave the church? The Holy Ghost hasn't left. Seems to me when Moses went off the scene, uh, Joshua was still there. Huh? God was still performing after the, the prophet went off the scene and there was a teacher on the scene and God was still performing miracles. God was still working among the people. The supernatural person is a person and he's still here. The purifier will lead us to the millennium. That's what Brother Brown said. If the purifier is still here, then why aren't people focusing for it, looking for it? You know why? They're always looking back, always looking forward, and failing to recognize what God is doing right now. First says only one five for our gospel came not, uh, came not unto you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Ghost and much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Hebrews six verse ten to twelve. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Full assurance of hope. Earnestly expecting. Whatever happened to earnestly expecting? So we see by all the scripture proofs that our assurance comes as a result of receiving a certain understanding or a knowledge, which, as Brother Brown put it, when we have this knowledge and we see ourselves responding to that knowledge, to the revelation of Christ in our midst, we come to the place where we just know. Everything just adds up to God's seed and therefore God's life in us. So my plea, my question to you, where's the God manifestation? In your life. I'm not talking about Laddering, running around, whooping it up, all kinds of emotion. No. 
Jesus didn't have a whole lot of emotion when all those people were here. Jesus didn't have a whole lot of emotion when he went to the cross. The Bible says he said not a word. I'm just talking about obedience is better than sacrifice. Where is the pure, unadulterated obedience to God and communion with God? Now, I challenge you this coming week to take time aside every morning. First thing you do when you get up, I don't care if you've got to go to work at 4 o'clock, put the iPod on. If you've got an hour to drive to work, listen to the prophet. Go to bed listening to the prophet. And I will guarantee your thoughts while you're sleeping will be righteous. They won't be all muddled and all kinds of weird dreams. They'll be focused. They'll be Christ-centered. And when you wake up, there'll be an atmosphere, a very sublime atmosphere. And as you listen during the day, you may still have trials, but you know what? The trials won't be your focus. Your focus will be Christ. And as you listen, go into bed. Instead of all the other muckety-muck stuff that's out there, it's the same old stuff we hashed every day. Nothing new under the sun. It's all the same old garbage. It's all it's either conspiracy theory or it's, or it's true stuff happening that we already knew about 20 years ago. Just now coming to pass. How about just tuning in? Focusing in. Focusing on Christ. I'll guarantee you, it'll change your life. Let's bow our in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for your work. And as Brother Bradham said, that our actions and the vindicated word in our life will prove what seed we are. It'll manifest your God life in us. Father, we pray that your light will shine greater and the seed that is in us will become more yielding and yielding until what people would see is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. This we pray, Father. That when people would look upon each and every one of us here, they would see Christians, true Christians. Not backbiters, not gossipers, not people that want to get even, not people that are focused on other things, but people who are so focused on Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, that the very actions, the very life, the very fruit, the very works that He did would be done also. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask it. Amen.